Hi folks, this is Kate with Fusion 3. Uh, today we are talking about the Anvil printhead. This is a uh, in-house printhead we developed. It's used on Edge and other future Fusion 3 products. And um, we're just going to do a quick video talking about some of the advantages of this printhead and um, some of the usual um, maintenance items and service items you may have to do. Now, of course, you may ask, why Anvil? Why did we develop this printhead? At the end of the day, it's all about improving the user experience. So we wanted a printhead that is easier to use. The normal printheads, easier to maintain, easier to restore to like new performance, and easier to change nozzle sizes. So how is Anvil built? The core of Anvil is a thin wall stainless, stu excuse me, stainless steel tube with an integrated nozzle. So this is a single piece construction from the top to the bottom. The nozzle is integrated into the tip. The key advantage of this design is there are no seams, there are no joints, so you have a zero chance of leakage from this design, and you have a much lower chance of jamming as well. These tubes are consumable and disposable items. Uh, we've specifically engineered them to be as inexpensive as possible. So if you encounter an issue, if you do jam one, if you experience degraded print quality, the solution to that is you just take the old tube out, you throw it away, you put a new one in. You also have easy access to the heater and sensor in this design, as you can see here. So let's talk about some of the common maintenance items you may have to do on an anvil printhead. So I have here a mock-up of a printhead assembly. So this is the printhead, the, the X-carriage body, the blower, some other components that you're going to see on the printhead assembly of an edge. Um, this is not in a printer, obviously, so you know your Bowden tube on your printer is going to be a little longer than this, but for the purposes of demonstration, this works well. So let's talk about how to change that printhead, or sorry, that printhead tube without taking the printhead off the printer. The first thing you're going to do is remove your Bowden tube. So you're going to push down on the release coupling here, and you're going to slide the fitting out, or you're going to slide the tube out of the fitting. The next thing you're going to do is actually unscrew that fitting from the printhead body. So you're going to take a two and a half millimeter driver, you're going to insert it into the fitting, and you're just going to unthread it. Now the fittings that come on edge are keyed inside for a hex drive, so you can see they're easy to take off. If you choose to replace these fittings with other fittings, some of those are not going to be internally keyed, they're going to have an external face that you can put a wrench on. Same thing applies though, you want to take that off the printer. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cold side fan off. That is the bo bottom two screws only. So we're just going to unthread these a little bit. Now you don't have to take these completely out. You're only unthreading them about mm, three to four millimeters. Basically, unthread them until the fan comes off is the easy rule. Just like that. Okay. Now you can leave the fan. I'm out of frame. You can leave the fan electrically connected. So just set that aside out of the way. The next thing we're going to do is loosen, but not remove, these six bolts. Two on the hot side, four on the cold side. Now, for the hot side bolts, I do recommend using a square tipped drive. Don't use a ball end drive. These can sometimes be very tight and you don't want to round them out. Okay, so again, I'm just going to loosen these. Okay, so I have my six screws loose. All right, so we've got our six screws loose here. Now, if our printhead is clean and relatively new, all we have to do is just push on the, make sure it's at some frame, just push on the tip of the tube until it slides up into the printhead. To finish removing it, you're going to take your two and a half millimeter hex drive and you're just going to push the tube until the top of it comes out of the printhead up here. Then you're going to grab it and remove it. And that's all there is to it. 
Now, if your print head is dirty on the bottom face, if you've got a lot of debris, molten filament, you may have to clean that off before you can easily remove the tube. Uh, if you need to do that, you're just gonna heat the print head up, you're gonna wire brush it off, and then you're gonna try again. All right, so installing our new tube. First thing we need to do is adjust the tightness of these top two cold side bolts. So that is this one here and this one here. What we're gonna do is we're going to tighten these until they bottom out, and then we're gonna reverse 90 degrees. The reason for that is the top of these tubes has a little flare. That flare is what registers the tube in the assembly at the correct height. And so you need to make sure that this clamp is the correct distance so you get the flare in the right place. All right, so we've got our screws set. Now, if you are reusing a used tube, um, like the one I have here, you can see that there's some debris on the part of the tube that was in the hot section. Best practice is to remove this before you reinstall it because we want a very tight interface, a clamping interface to help the heat transfer into the tube. Best way to do that is to take a uh, 600 grit, 800 grit sandpaper and just sand it very gently. You don't want to remove the metal, you just want to polish the debris off. So to reinstall our new tube, we are just going to drop it into the top of the assembly, push it in with our finger, finish pushing it down with the two and a half millimeter driver that I keep using for everything. Now, when the tube is correctly set, you're going to see three to four millimeters poking out of the bottom of the print head right there. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and tighten my cold side clamps. I'm just going to get these finger tight for, at first. Okay, then I'm going to come in and I'm going to get them you know, properly tight. And I'm going to do that in a crisscross pattern like you would use for a car, uh, car wheel lug nuts. Okay, so those are tight. Now on my hot side, before I tighten these screws, I want to make sure my heater and my sensor, yeah, you can see that, are fully inserted into the block. Um, sometimes these can back out a little bit. They'll look kind of like that. You want them fully inserted as much as you can. So these two look good. We're going to go ahead and tighten these two screws. And again, you want to get these fairly tight because the, the clamping interface between our blocks and the tube is what's transferring the heat into the tube and out of the tube. Okay. Second to last step is we take our 30 millimeter fan. Now these two lower fan screws, let me make sure I can do this. They're going to register in these two threaded holes here and here. These can be a little bit tricky to find the first time because you're doing this blind, but basically you center the, the fan over the cold side and just kind of start gently threading and you should feel them drop into place. There we go. These don't have to be super tight. Remember you're clamping a fan. Um, it's not made out of metal. Don't overdo it on this. Okay. Your last step is you reinstall your PTC fitting. I'm sorry, second to last step. There we go. You just thread that in until it bottoms out. Then your last step is going to be reinstalling your Bowden tube. Now, uh, important note, if you are, if you've, if your Bowden tube has been in use for any amount of time, you will want to either replace it or trim the end, as we discussed in some of our other documentation. Um, I'll do a quick aside here to talk about why. So PTC fittings, it stands for push to connect. Fittings are wonderful because they're really fast to get the tube in and out of. So if you need to remove a tube to service something or you just want to, it's really quick and easy. The downside is the way these grab onto um, the tubes is they have a bunch of little knife blades inside and these knife blades over time will cut into the tube. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this tube actually has a little ring down here. It's filled with debris, so it's slightly gray. 
That's the big, that's formed by the knives as they cut into the tube. Now, over time, what happens is that groove will get deeper and deeper and deeper, and eventually, uh, one or two things will happen. Actually, one of three things, but something will happen. It won't be good. Um, you can either get the tube permanently stuck in the fitting because the groove gets so deep that you can't disengage the knife blades when you push down on the release collar. And that's a pain to fix because you have to replace the tube and the fitting and you cannot get to the hex drive in the center because there's a tube in there. So you have to get some pliers and slowly work it out. Uh, or the tube will fail because we've created a mechanical weak point because there's a big notch in it and the, you get a blowout. So the tube blows out of the fitting you have a little piece of PTFE stuck in your fitting, and your tube is ruined, and your print may fail. So that's also not good. So that's why we have a maintenance timer on edge that prompts you to uh, service the Bowden tube every 50 hours, um, because it, we really want to prevent these situations from happening. So anyway, once you've established your tube either needs to be replaced and you do it, or you establish it's safe to reuse, you go ahead and reinsert that. And there you go. That's how you change a tube on anvil without removing the print head from the printer. Alright, so what if you need to remove the print head from the printer? Alright, first thing we're going to do, as with our tube removal, we're going to take our fan off. This assumes we can leave the fan on the printer electrically. So, uh, the fan is not why we're removing the, the print head in this case. So again, we're going to take that off. We're going to leave that electrically connected back here on our breakout board. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, loosen our hot section. And I will show you why momentarily. Okay. We're going to get those loose. To actually mechanically remove the print head, we're going to loosen these two um, M3 flatheads up here. That's a two millimeter driver. These can be pretty tight in some cases. Um, so if you've got an L key driver instead of uh, one of the tools I'm using, that can make this a little easier. And this is going to be really awkward. Get out of the way. So we've got our two screws loose. We're going to back these completely out. Okay, whoops. All right, so our screws are loose. Our print head is now loose in our assembly. Here's why we loosen the hot section. The easiest way to get the print head off is to leave your heater and your sensor electrically connected to the printer itself. So I have my pr print head hardware detached. These stay connected. That's the easiest way to do it. All right, and then installation is the reverse of the removal. I used to hate it when uh, like car manuals and stuff would say that because it's like, well, obviously it's the reverse, but you're not telling me about any of the subtleties uh, relating to doing this. So we will be a little bit more verbose. It is pretty simple though. You slide your heater and sensor back in and then you go ahead and mate this up and you just want to get, this is really a two-handed operation and I'm trying to use one hand to stabilize my thing. Okay. So I've got my screws started but they're not tight. Now the alignment of the print head with the filament path is fairly critical here. And so that's one of the reasons we're using flat heads up here. But what that means for you is as you install this, you want to make sure that you don't have any weird side forces on this thing pushing or pulling it out of position. So we're good. I'm just going to do the incremental, tighten a little bit over here, tighten a little bit over here. Just like that. And then obviously you need to retighten your hot section, like so. 
and then reinstall your 30 millimeter fan. And again, this is actually easier when you have a printhead assembly in a machine versus one rolling around on a desk like I do. Okay, that's our printhead reinstalled and ready to go. All right, the next topic I want to talk about is how to uh, remove the electrical components if you need to. So this is really simple, but there is one subtlety I want to cover. So if we flip this around, all our wiring for Edge's printhead comes into what we call this breakout board here. This breakout board um, brings in an 8-pin harness, which is not shown here for clarity, that lands here, and then we break out the various connectors. The printhead heater and or sensor and heater come in down here on the bottom of this connector, or this breakout board, sorry. This is your sensor, this is your heater, and your 30 millimeter fan is up here. Um, these are pretty straightforward. They do have a latch that you need to push down and then pull the connector out. Sometimes they're more stubborn than other times. There we go. So that's the 30 millimeter fan disconnected. It is very important that you get these back in the right spot because they are all two pin connectors. If you put your sensor onto your heater cartridge out, uh, output and then you heat it up, it is going to have a bad day. It is going to break. Um, and then your print head is not going to work right. So sensor over here, heater cartridge here. We have pictures in our documentation um, documenting which of these connectors goes to what. So if you're not sure, please find that and follow it. The one subtlety here, let me see if I can do this without looking like a complete idiot. On the side of our bed pro body here is a zip tie. The zip tie retains the heater power and the sensor. Uh, so this is just some basic cable management to keep these wires out of the way. So if you do need to remove either of these components from the printer, you will need to cut this zip tie. When you replace that component, you will need to reinstall it. Um, cable management or wire management around the printhead assembly is very critical because if these wires are too low, they will get they could potentially catch in your print and cause a um, cause defects in your print. Obviously, also potentially um, damaging something or breaking something. So that's all there is to that.